Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. My name is Brandy, and this week we're gonna be working on this piece that's behind me. And this one's gonna be just kind of fun. So I wanted to enter a challenge. Uh, it's called the Maker's Challenge. And this year their challenge theme is texture. And so I chose to work on this piece behind me because it had a lot of damage. Uh, the existing finish has some crackling in it. Um, it's got some, you know, exi existing damage. People had tried to patch it at one point. So there was no taking this one back to wood. It needs to be built up. And so when I have bad texture, what do I like to do? I like to turn it into good texture. And that's exactly what I'm going to do on this one. It has great bones. It's very well made. It's a super cute piece. So um, I'm going to be doing a couple different techniques. Um, to add texture, I'm going to add texture with my paint. I think we might do some raised stenciling. Um, we might do some smooth texture. Um, how to take something rough and make it smooth, because smooth is a texture as well. Um, and so I'm going to incorporate as many different kinds of texture in different areas that I can think of on this piece. So I hope you guys will stick around. Join me on my challenge. I don't quite know where it's going, but all I can think is texture. Um, and let's go ahead and get started on this one. Here's where I started on this piece. It's in rough shape, but it's got great bones. I love the shape of it, those barley twist legs, but you can see all the scratches and damage that's in the existing finish. This one definitely needs a makeover and there's no restoring it back to the wood. So we're gonna give it some good texture over the bad texture. I started out by filling any spots that needed filling and then sanding over it with my surf prep sander. The old screw holes on this hardware were stripped out. There was no taking them off, and so I decided to leave them on and go ahead and paint them with my finish. I'm going to give the body a good cleaning. This one's definitely a bleeder, so it needs a primer. This is a stain blocking primer from Wise Owl in light gray that's going to keep the stains from bleeding through into my paint. The inside was not too pretty either, so I needed to give it a coat of paint. I decided to go ahead and roll on this shade of Wise Owl One Hour Enamel that's mixed from Botanical and Refurbished Gentleman. This is a texture piece, right? So let's give it some texture. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape on this mixture of paint mixed with salt wash um, to create this textured finish. On the body, I just scraped on a random pattern of my mud using a spread pal from Redesign with Prima, which is a silicone spatula tool. On the top, I'm gonna to spread a fairly even coat of the mud using a bowl scraper, which is actually a kitchen tool. Once I've got a fairly even coat over top, I'm gonna to roll over this using a textured roller from Artistic Painting Studios. This is their crocodile roller, but if I over roll it, then I'm gonna give it this kind of random textured pattern. Over rolling it just means that instead of a single pass, I rolled over the same spot multiple times to kind of mess up the pattern. I'm gonna complete my scraping pattern over the sides of my piece and my textured finish is almost ready. I'm gonna let this texture dry overnight and when I come back the next day, I'm gonna to need to seal it in a coat of shellac. The shellac is gonna keep the texture from reactivating when I put paint over top. You can see how cool this texture on the top turned out. It is a little bit rough, but once it's dry, I'm gonna give it a single pass with my surf prep sander and a fine grit sanding paper and that's gonna take down the very tops of these nubs so it's a smooth finish. I sand lightly over the body, making sure that I'm not over sanding it. I don't want to remove my texture, only smooth it out and remove any loose bits. Once my shellac is dry, I'm ready to start adding paint over the top of my texture. For this finish, I'm using a mixture of Purico paint and Wise Owl. For this base coat that I'm brushing on, I'm going to brushing it on using a cross hatching pattern. And I chose to use this because it also adds even more texture and the light brush strokes are going to catch the texture of the mud underneath just perfectly to really emphasize those lines. So I'm going to have texture from my mud and then I'm also going to have texture from the paint over top. This piece is all about texture. For my base coat, I'm using a mixture of blues and then I'm going to uh, blend it up into creams and whites. Um, and also some little tads of gold. So I'm just uh, brushing them on. I start with my darkest coat on the bottom and then I'm gonna brush slightly lighter coats over top, um, alternating colors so I have contrast in between each layer. I'm not trying to get full coverage here. I do want some spots of that mud peeking through so I have those dark spots from the texture um, and just the light spots of the paint over top. I'm using very light brush strokes, very little paint on my brush and I'm using natural bristle brushes to add even more texture. Natural bristle brushes have coarser bristles and so they're more likely to leave brush strokes in your finish which is great for looks like this. If you're looking for a smooth even finish, you definitely wanna go with a synthetic brush. 
This finish takes a ton of brush strokes and it also uses a lot of colors, but it's a really cool look to do and I love the end result, so it's totally worth it. Here's where I landed at the end of my first coat. I was initially thinking kind of beachy, but it was just missing something for me. So as I come into my second coat, I decided to add a little something different. I'm gonna add some fiery red and rust colors. I'm repeating the same process that I did on my first coat with a cross hatching pattern with my blues on the bottom and then mixing up into creams and whites on the top. Only this time when I come to the center section, I'm gonna add some Iron Oxide, Republic Red, and Mandarina from Wiesel Paint. These are going to be that little bit of fire that it was missing. You can see how those orange and rust tones just kind of bring it alive. That was exactly what this piece was missing. The blue and the white was just a little plain on their own. I feel like this almost looks like a fiery sunset over water. It's very rich and textured and very abstract, which suits the look of this piece. Those light brush strokes and overlapping the colors very slightly, although it looks very abstract, each stroke is very deliberate. Here's where I landed on the front of this. I did feel like it needed a couple adjustments, but overall I'm pretty happy. So since this piece is all about texture, I also wanna make the inside about texture. And so I'm going to add a decoupage finish. Since this piece almost has an industrial or steampunk kind of look to it, I chose this paper from Recycled that complements the look perfectly. It's got a black background and then these bold numericals, which um, are pretty cool. And then I went ahead and crumpled my paper up and created a lot of creases. I added a coat of clear coat over the back of my painted door. Um, this is just coated in Wiesel black and then a little bit of their clear coat. And then I'm gonna press down the wrinkled paper, but I wanna emphasize those wrinkles. 
I'm gonna brush a coat of the same clear coat over the top of it, and then I'm just gonna use my hand to smooth it out. But by using my hand to smooth it out, I'm also creating more and emphasizing the wrinkles even more. You can see them slowly start to appear as I run my hand over the top. This rubbing also removes some of the color from the top of the wrinkles, and so it makes them kind of a white color and makes them stand out even more. Once I've ran my hand over the entirety of the paper, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the excess from the edges. I'm just gonna use a sanding block and run it along the edges, and since this paper is kind of wet, it's softened it and it tears away easily. My hardware wasn't removed on this, but I still wanna make it stand out. So even though it's got my painted finish on it, I came back with a little bit of gold gilding wax from Redesign with Prima, and I'm just gonna run that over top with my finger. All right, the base on this piece is beautiful. It's got these barley twist legs, and I do love to contrast a painted finish with a little bit of wood detail. And also this is about texture, so it's going to have the texture of the natural wood on the base. But how do you sand barley twist legs? The only way I would do it is with my surf prep sander. I added one of their padded sanding sponges to the back of my surf prep and then I put on a piece of sandpaper. This is an 80 grit and I'm just going in between all the layers of this barley twist and that gets most of my finish out. But then I'm gonna go ahead and go to a softer sponge and I'm gonna offset it a little bit so that I can press it into those crevices. And I was able to get out most of the finish without doing any hand sanding. Here is my piece with that base sanded down. I do have one more detail I wanna to add to it though. I have these beautiful barley twist legs here and I sanded them down pretty well, but I actually wanna kinda emphasize some of the shape of them. I feel like when it's all in the wood tone, it gets a little bit lost. So I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, Wiesel paint and this is the color black and I'm just taking an artist brush and I'm going to ride my artist brush in some of these crevices with just kind of a dry brush. And then I'm just gonna smudge that out and work that black paint into that crevice. And I kind of like how it just ages that. And when I stand back a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. When I stand back a little bit, I'll show you guys, it's just gonna bring out some of the shape. Re refill my brush. for kind of a smoked or charred effect. And then I'm gonna do some here in these crevices too. So any of this little bit of um, uh, the old stain that I left on is gonna be covered by my black paint. And then I'll just have the high points exposed. And this wood uh, actually had had some water damage to it, but it means that it's got a ton of character in the sanded down wood. And I love that because this is a texture challenge and what better uh, than to show wood texture with it as well. Once my legs are done, I'm ready to start adding a clear coat. I did decide to clear coat this with a brush because it's got so much texture on it. I wanted to make sure and get it down into all of those deep spaces. So I use one of my Klingon brushes. I did go ahead and sand over the top of my barley twist one more time. So it just left that dark down in the crevices and I really like how these legs look. So I'm gonna wipe on a coat of clear using a, a sponge. With my clear coat on, this piece is done. This actually has a mirror that goes up behind it, so I didn't add any wall art for my staging. I just used a simple gold base and some orange flowers to tie in with the fiery oranges on the piece. I wish you guys could rub your hand over the top of this one. The texture on it is amazing. Look at that detail. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, you can find a list of everything I use in the description for this post, along with links of where to find everything. And you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com.